Lily Dale with Off the Beaded Path, and this is your Must Know Monday for Monday, February the 19th. Today, I want to talk to you all about stretch cords. Last videos that I did were on the carrier beads, and I made basic stretch bracelets with those carrier beads and as soon as those videos came out I started getting lots of questions about you know what sizes of the stretch cord can I use um, do I tie this do I knot this do I um, you know crimp this do I put glue on the ends you know all these different questions you know we're just rolling in so what I wanted to do is I wanted to take a day just to kind of go over some of the basics of the stretch cords and some of the different sizes for you. So why do you want to use stretch cord? I understand that not everybody loves stretch cord, but stretch cord is wonderful. And if you understand the sizing of your stretch cords that you should be using, you will have much better results with your finished projects. So basically with a stretch cord, it's wonderful to use because of the fact that you can make a one size fits most. So if you are making bracelets to sell or you are making as a gift, it works out really wonderful because you can make it a general, let's say seven inches. And then most people are going to be able to wear that as a stretch bracelet. But like I said, it's very important to know your sizing and the different sizing. The most popular sizes for the stretch cord are a 0.5, a 0.7, and a one millimeter. So what I wanna do is I wanna kinda show you some examples of these sizes so you can see the difference. And then I wanna show you a basic stack of bracelets that we're gonna make where each of these bracelets is going to use a different size of the cording just because I want you to be able to see, you know, and kind of determine for yourself what size of these stretch that you should be using for each of your bracelets. So let's go ahead and so get started. So here is an example of some different size stretch cords that we carry in our store. We have the 0.5 millimeter. Now this is your thinnest one. It's very, very thin as you can see here. This is great for ring bands and things like that. 0.7 is kind of your middle around and you can kind of see here the difference. It's just a little bit thicker and a little bit um, sturdier than your 0.5. This is, you know, pretty much what I would use for a lot of your beading. The next size we carry is a newer size. It's a 0.8. And honestly, between the 0.8 and the 1, there is not a whole lot of difference to me. It looks a lot of about the same. But you compare your 1 to your 0.5, and you can see the really big difference in these cordings. Now that you've seen the actual sizes of the cord, what you need to know now is how do you choose? Out of those four sizes, what do you choose and how do you choose it? Well, really, that's going to depend on the size hole in your bead. You want to use the thickest cord that you can use for your bead. So let's say, take for example, um, I have this black stretchy bracelet that I made. Now, this is a 10 millimeter bead. So you would think that it would have a nice big hole to it, but it doesn't. It has a um, hole that a 0.7 stretch magic will just fit through. I tried to use the 0.8 and it would not. So that is that one. But now I have this here. This is basically the same size. This one is a nine by seven, and um, this has a one millimeter stretch cord. You can use the 0.8 or the one millimeter. So although it's basically the same size bead, because the hole is bigger in this one, I had to use a bigger cord. So basically what I do is when I get a bead, I'll take my bead, I'll lay out what I think is going to go in it, and I will test that. If the cord looks like it's gonna be too big, then I will just bump down a size. If the cord looks minute, like say if I tried to use a 0.5 cord in something with a hole, um, you know, this size, 
That would be crazy. It would break in a heartbeat. So that's what you really want to pay attention to. You want to use something that will pretty much fill up your hole. Now the only time that's gonna become different is if you want to put something really fun and different on your bracelet. Like maybe you want that to be the centerpiece for your bracelet. So what I want to do today is I wanna show you if you take something special like um, this little um, Labradite Pave finished oval or say let's do chain. Um, I want to show you how you would actually do that and determine the size cording that you're going to use for So that. I want to make a bracelet where this is going to be my centerpiece and I'm going to use these really pretty 10 millimeter silver coin beads with those. So I have the 0.7 Stretch Magic and what I'm going to do is I'm actually, I've cut a little sample piece and I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to thread it through the hole because this is gonna be doubled. So I can get a doubled piece in here, but you can see that there's still a good bit of hole there that needs to be filled up. So the 0.7 is good, but now I'm gonna try the one millimeter. This is the largest size, and again, I've cut just a little sample piece of it. I'm gonna fold it in half and I'm going to thread both pieces through the hole in my bead. Now you can see here that this one millimeter uses up a good bit more of my hole rather than the 0.7. So I'm gonna use the one millimeter thread or the one millimeter stretch cord to do this bracelet so with. For my first bracelet I want to make, I want to put this piece in the center of my bracelet. But what I need to do, I need to actually test the hole in my bead to see what size cording I'm going to use. So the first one that I'm going to start out with, I'm going to start out with my 0.7 millimeter cord. Now I've cut a little sample piece of cord here and I'm going to fold this sample piece in half. And I'm going to put both pieces of cord through the hole of the bead. Now it's very important, we want to use up a good bit of the hole as much as we can, but at the same time, this needs to kind of flow freely over the piece. And you'll want to check, like that one, that one was good. Um, let's try another one. You'll want to check several of your beads because no matter what, some of your beads do have different size holes. So you'll just check, I check about three, just random ones. And this 0.7 feels very good. Now this one, it's a little tight in here, um, but the 0.7 feels really good. Now what I'll do is I'm gonna take a little sample of the, you can try the 0.8 or the one size, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I've cut myself a little sample of it. I'm gonna fold that in half, and now these same three beads that I just used to test the 0.7, I'm gonna test these same ones again. Okay, so the one millimeter fills this hole up rather well, and is good in that one. Okay, let's put it in this one. Okay, so this one I can barely get, I can't get both pieces into the hole on this one. Oh, there we go. It's a very, very tight fit on that one, but I can get it in. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, same thing. It's a tight fit. Um, just going to try see if there's any more here that I would thread on. Yeah. So for this one, I could use either the 0.7. I could use either this one or this one. Um, because this was such a tight fit, the one was on this one, I think I'm gonna use the 0.7, um, just because it was a very, very tight fit, and I'm afraid that some of my thread would not fit through. So you have two options actually on how to connect it. The first way is I've taken 11 inches and folded it in half, and I'm going to thread both those ends through the loop and then take my ends and actually stitch, stick them through the loop middle of my piece. 
So you can do it just like this. The only thought process and problem that I have with doing it this way is you have to keep the thread pulled very tight to keep the little um, connection up here. Otherwise, it gets loose and you see what happened. That thread pops right down through there. The other option that you have when doing actually connecting this one is to go ahead and take one end of your piece of cord, stick it through the little loop you've made here, and then just bring your ends together. And when you do that, then you can just start threading on your beads. So you'll start threading them on. And I'm only going to put half of the beads that I need on here. So when you pull them all the way down, this is what you'll have here. So I'm going to put half the beads on this side, and then I'm going to cut a new piece of thread and do half the beads so on this side. So I now have my beads threaded on each side of my centerpiece. And I made the right choice in that .7 cord because even in some of these, double was a little bit hard to get through. So now, to finish it off, I'm going to take the two, all four pieces, so my two here and my two here, and I'm going to come under, like I'm going to start tying my tennis shoe, and I'm going to pull this nice and tight. Now, I'm going to put my fingers here, and this time, when I go under, I'm going to go once and twice, and then I'm going to pull really tight. Pull tight. Do not be afraid to pull these threads tight because if it's going to break, you want it to break right now while you're making it and it, you know, because you would hate to, for somebody to put it on the first time and break. So at this point, I am pulling this thread really hard and you can see that my knot is not coming apart. It is um, there to stay. I mean, it is good. Um, if you really, really are concerned, you can come through one more time. Go one and two and pull it really tight. And then you can either use your um, scissors like I've done to cut that knot or you can actually um, use your little thread burner and burn off some of those right there. But when you put it on, that would give you a beautiful centerpiece here for your bracelet. Um, but you would do the same thing here with these. Now the only problem is, let me grab another bead here. Let's say for this one, I want to use these black beads. These are going to work great, except for the fact that I already know for sure this is the point seven. Okay, and I'll show you. this is the point seven here. And when I fold this one in half and try to go through the hole of this black bead, it is not going to fit. Two strands of this are not going to fit through this bead because it has. A little tiny hole. So in this case we will have to use the 0.5 doubled. So let me get some of this cut so for and this I'll show bracelet, you. I've got the aluminum chain. This one is a 14 by 27 aluminum chain and I've made sure that it is completely closed. The Both end links are really nice and closed. And what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to turn the link so that the little open spot is here to the inside. Now again, I'm using the 0.5 so that I can get the 0.5 through the hole in the bead. And I'm going to do this one differently from this one. I'm actually going to take and put the two ends through the loop and pull it because on this one I don't have to worry about that loop you know falling down it's gonna stay where it's at here so at this point I can just take and start threading my beads on
and let them fall down to the chain. Now I'm going to do this one exactly like I did this bracelet here, where I do this on so both I've sides. I've got all my beads threaded on each side here. And again, just like the previous bracelet, I'm just going to take these ends. I'm going to use all four pieces here. And then I'm going to go under once, under twice, and pull this nice and tight here. And then I'm going to do this again. Once, twice, pull it. And then I'm going to check it, and it is good to go. So now I can take and I can get rid of these cords. So now you can add this to your stack of bracelets and that gives you another um, cool textured look that you could wear there. Now, I wanted to show you um, the black. I did a plain black one, like I said, and this one I used the 0.7, so I'm just going to add that on to what I've got here. Add that onto the back here. And then I have this orbit one. Now, I wanted you to see the size of the hole in this orbit bead. It's a pretty good size hole, and you can see that the when I put the one millimeter in, it fills up the hole fairly well, so that's actually what I used for this one. So then now that adds another bracelet to the stack of your pieces. And you can see it's very chunky, but you have a really cool stack, and each one has its correct stretch cord with it. As you can see, our bracelet stack turned out really well, and almost every one used a different size cord. Now, don't get me wrong, please take this with a grain of salt, but you can use, um, you know, you can try and use, like if you have it in your stash, the general, let's say like 0.7 for most of these, but you have to understand Anything that is made of stretch cord is going to break over time. Plastic stretch is like anything else. The more you wear it, you wash your hands with the stuff on, um, you know, just whole nine yards, it's gonna break down and it's going to break. I cannot tell you how many expensive um, name brand jewelry items people bring to my store for us to restring because it's broken. And just because you pay $300 for a bracelet don't mean it ain't gonna break. Just like if you pay $2 for a bracelet um, with the stretch cord. But the stretch cord does work great. Um, so you just need to caution people about that. Like, hey, be gentle with this. Is, um, you know, so that you'll know. <clears throat> Another thing to understand is um, I had some customers, um, some actual in-store customers who brought me their stretch cord and they're like, okay, so which one of these do I use? Well, um, one person's cord was so old that it had turned yellow. So if you have yellow stretch cord at home, please do not use that. The best place for that is for the at the bead graveyard, aka the trash can, because that stuff is not gonna work good for you, okay? So try to use the freshest that you've got. The other cord that I do carry here in my store is a stretch cord called Opalon. The main difference in the two, and I can't even show you because we're completely sold out right this second, um, but the main difference in the two is that the Stretch Magic is a plastic stretch, okay? The Opalon is a fiber stretch. It is a white fiber. Now, I will tell you, it comes in different sizes too, but the only thing about it, it's very, very easy to tie. The only problem with it is that it shreds very easily, okay? So if you are trying to use a big eye needle, it's very floppy. So if you're trying to use a big eye needle to actually thread your beads on, the big eye needle can shred it. Um, even certain beads, like if your bead has a sharp inside to it and it rubs on that cord, it will shred that cord. And for me 
personally, I have not had lots of success with that open lawn cord, but now like Patty that works here, she raves about the open lawn cord and she's not so, you know, hip on the, the stretch cord. So it's really what you start out with and kind of what you get used to that, that you start using and you like. I will tell you, um, because some of these beads are specialty type beads that I don't necessarily care necessarily carry all the time in the store. Um, these bracelets, this stack bracelet is going to be a kit. And that's the only way that these beads and these certain findings will come together is in a kit. Now, if you purchase the, the kit for this, you're also going to get a really cool informational sheet that I'm going to um, include in that that tells you about the different sizes of the cords, the different kinds of the cords. So it actually will benefit you greatly for getting the kit. Also, because I've talked about the three main sizes of stretch cords today, we are also going to offer a bundle package on our website where you will get three well, let me find my note here. You will get three different packages of the cord. You will get the 0.5 stretch magic. It has 32 feet on a roll. You'll get the 0.7, which has 16 feet on a roll. And you will get a roll of the one millimeter and it has 16 feet on it. Normally, if you purchased all three separately, it would be $11.20. Um, but for a very limited time, you will get all three for $10. Now, please understand when you go to our website, do, if you want the bundle, do not purchase all three um, separately. Make sure that you find the bundle and you put the bundle in there. And you can find both the kit for this week. This is gonna be called the Stretch Cord Bracelet Stack. So um, you can find this kit and the bundle under the Must Know Monday heading on our website, which is off the beaded path beadstore.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a fabulous day. Bye bye. <laughs>